Hi there, I wanted to do a little follow-up review of my 13-foot scamp that we just got. I've done some things to it and we have had the chance to camp and it was very nice. Um, but I want to show you. We're going to show you some things outside. Please be patient with the noise. I live on a kind of a busy road, but I want to show you some things. Then we'll go inside the camper and I'll show you some things in there. Inside, I'm actually letting the heater run to burn out the smell. All heaters smell when they first turn on. And when it, the heater comes on or the furnace comes on, my wife thinks it's burning down the trailer. So I wanted to burn all the stink out before we actually do some major camping in it. Okay, I get, just got done doing the things that I wanted to do, but I'll show you a few things that I've done. Um, one is that I put this level on the front here. And that is so we can tell if it's level while we're backing it in. Um, I got a leveling system for it. It's by Anderson and it's USA made. And you can check this out on YouTube, but I want to get one for myself and uh, we'll see how it works. But it's this kind of half moon wedge type system. Well, what you do is you pull the trailer onto it and it goes from half inch all the way up to four inches and then you can just drive off, but we're not going to do that with the scamp because it's so low to the ground. This will end up, I think, kicking up and hitting the, the uh, fiberglass. So we're going to pull it on and then we're just going to back it off. And what you do after that's underneath the wheel, you just put this wedge under there to secure it. So because we have this, I needed a way to see, for my wife to see when the trailer's level. So we've got front and back here and left to right here. And my driveway, as you can see, is a little level. I actually tested it um, with my other level. Okay, so the next thing I have done, which is actually kind of important, is I put this chain here on the uh, door latch because this thing is just a bear to close. And I had, to, I, I had another chain here and I'll show you that and I had to replace it because there was enough force that it was start, starting to spread the chain. So at first, First I had this kind of chain, hopefully you can see it. Now that chain I think is rated to like 30 pounds or something and what happened is when we closed the door it was actually spreading those links out. So that didn't work. So then I got this other chain um, from Home Depot and I think this chain here, hopefully you can see that, I think this is rated to 200 pounds, something like that. 150, 200 pounds. So it should hold up a little better and hopefully the links won't spread. It's made a little different. So put that right here on the latch and let me show you because this this thing is a bear to close now i think it was this year or last they updated the springs in that latch because what they had is they had some doors that were actually springing open while the trailer was driving down the road so what they did is they put a much stiffer spring here in this latch at any rate it is a bear to close they have this handle here but it's in a real bad position to close that guy you know you're not getting the full force you can when this is in the middle there's not you're not getting as much leverage as you should be able to get I mean with this the hinges here the fulcrums here and then this is in the med middle so where you actually want to pull the door shut is right here so I put this chain on there and I put it in one screw on the top and one screw on the bottom and I saw a guy on one of the forms that made a plate for this for his, his he's got some cables on there and what that allows him to do is capture all three of these screws, which is better, but I haven't gotten around to that, to making that plate yet. So this, hopefully this will work this year. So what you do to close it, excuse the shaky camera, I've got a hold of it right here. And what you do is you're, you're just gonna push down on that latch a little bit and then pull. And I can tell you that's a lot easier than using this guy. Now, when we first got this camper, I was using this to close it, and I actually wrenched my back out of whack. And I was doing, you know, it was fine. I thought it was fine. And I was doing something outside in the morning, and I reached for something. Like, oh, I got a kink in my back. So that was a good day or two of a stiff back. So this this helps out a lot. And if you're going to do this, get the, get the good chain here, or the better chain, um, which has more weight. This is 200 pounds. And this is like 30. This will pull right out. So that's a, that's a major thing. Now, last time that I did a video, I told you about these rivets that had pulled out. So 
There's one here and one here. Now I fixed them both. I put a spacer back there so that it wouldn't put too much pressure on the rivet. A plastic nylon spacer that I got from Home Depot that I wedged in between the backsplash and the body. And then I fed the pop rivet through. I got extra long ones that I ordered off of Amazon. And then after I fed that through, I took this washer. I reamed the washer out a little bit so it just fit around that that um, pop rivet. So it would have something really good to bite on. So then I stuffed the pop rivet through and then I had my wife, while I was holding the outside, put this washer on and then I pulled it tight. And it's really, it's really got a good grip there. So that was fixed. There's one other problem with the stove that I'll, I'll go over in a minute and I'll tell you what I did for that. And I put this toilet paper holder here because it doesn't come with one. Now, this is a new camper, so I'm not really willing to drill holes in the fiberglass yet. But um, I think this will do. When you close the door, it's, a, it's about right. I meant to put it a little closer, but I didn't. And then the reason I wanted it a little closer is because my wife's short. She's got small, short arms. Now, this is a 3M stick-on that I got off of uh, Amazon. <clears throat> Excuse me. It gets really good ratings, but we'll see when it falls off. I'm sure it'll fall off at some point, but maybe it'll last a couple years. When it does, I'll put another one up. I think I'd rather drill into this wood than I would the fiberglass. It's just my opinion. I'm going to cut away here for a minute and I will get the get the part for the stove that I fixed and I will show you what I did to that. Okay, now I hope you will forgive the bad lighting here. But I had a problem with the stove and I hadn't mentioned it in the initial review because I, did, I wanted to be fair. Um, I've had a problem with a Suburban stove in the past. My little guy actually had a Suburban stove and it actually had the exact same problem. And I will try to explain. Now, you know, I noticed this right away on our trip coming back. And when I came back, I contacted um, Scamp and I explained, I sent him pictures. And I explained the situation and they transferred me to the owner, his email. He said, sorry about that. I'll have one sent right away. And what happened is this burner here, which is the one I have in my hand, they didn't make it right and it leaked. So you'd light it and it had flame around here, but then poop, you'd see a little blue flame underneath here. Now that might be fine for gas grills on your deck outside of your house as they rust, but this is a small little box and I don't think I wanted it to light on fire underneath the burner. So here's the defect here. Hopefully you can see that. Let me, excuse me, put it over here in the light. Maybe you can take a look. As you're looking around, you can see a nice pronounced lip where that burner's folded over the bottom piece. When you get right here, you can see it, it's not folded properly. Okay, so you don't see a lip that comes over and grabs this part here. Now, what happened is when you light the burner, this would leak down here and you get a little blue flame under there. Now, I found that unacceptable. As I said, I contacted Scamp and they transferred me to the owner of Scamp and he apologized. He sent one out right away. It came back. It came to me. They also sent me a valve, which I did not need. Excuse me. <coughs> I unscrewed these two screws here and I took it apart and I replaced it. Now, the only thing I do not like about this stove, I don't like the Suburban stove, you know, because this is the second stove I've had problems with, but it's okay. It'll work fine. Um, notice that one of those bur valves, this valve here is a little higher, and that's because it's a little cocked in there. Now, I can't get to it because, unfortunately, this isn't, the stove is not bolted in. It is pop riveted in, which kind of goes with the whole motif of everything, so I can understand they're going into fiberglass. However, I'd like it better if it was bolted so that if I need to work on the stove, I could get it out. But it works fine now. Everything's uh, as it should be. I mean, kind of see how that lip is put up. So there was that issue. They sent it to me right away. I fixed the pop rivets. I put a toilet paper holder on. This, this right here is an issue, but I fixed it. It should last a good long while like that, I'm thinking. Um, you may want to do the same with your new one. Um, I put the level in the front. Oh, I also put these hooks here to hang our stuff, you know, our coats and things when we come in so they're not just laying around. Now, again, these are stick-ons. These are 3M stick-ons. And uh, it's a new camper. I just don't want to be drilling through the fiberglass yet. I'm just not ready for that. 
So I'm sure these will come off one day. Hopefully they'll last a couple of years, a year or two. When they do, I'll just replace them. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll drill through. I'll put new sticky ones on. I don't know. Now I also got this one and a half inch foam memory topper for this bed. Excuse me, from Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, this bed is very uncomfortable. And I can understand why. These are seat cushions, so you want them to be kind of firm. When you put this one and a half... Um, inch memory foam on there it makes it tolerable i will say that i also bought this long funnel off of amazon and that is so when you're putting fresh water in it's not so hard to get in i will step outside of the trailer and i will show you what this is for but those are the updates i made so far okay it's nice and toasty in there it's a little cool out here so anyway here's your fresh water input and to get water in there it's kind of a messy process because this doesn't stick out so you end up pouring water in there and it runs down the back here. So I got this. And I was hoping that this might work a little better. I can see there's still an issue because this funnel needs to come out and be curved up. But maybe it's it'll be a little easier to get water in there. I kind of doubt it. I can at least put antifreeze in there when I winterize it. But so that's that that's everything I've done to it so far. And I do like it. I would like to get out and do some more camping, but unfortunately that's not in the cards right now, so thanks for watching.